two times. And then we have how many twos happened? 170, 163, 164 fours, 149 fives, and 175 sixes. And we can see that those add up to a thousand, which makes sense because we rolled it a thousand times. That's kind of our check figure. The difference then, this is what we expected to happen. This is what actually happened. So there's a difference of 15, it's pretty close, but not exact. A difference of three, a difference of seven on the positive side, a difference of three, a difference of 18, a difference of eight, and so on. So then if I was to plot this, I can say this is the actual outcome, right? So the expected was a straight line, but the actual outcome is not exactly a straight line. But if I was to try to predict what's going to happen in the future, it's useful for me to be able to use a function of basically just the straight line, right? I'm going to, if I'm going to say what's going to happen in the future, well, this looks like it can be approximated pretty closely with the straight line. So that's why the straight, that's why that's going to give us some predictive power about what will happen in the future. If I wasn't able to do that, if I was to say, hey, look, this doesn't look like it conforms to anything. It's just the, the numbers are coming up randomly, which could very well happen in different circumstances. Some data sets might not be able to be represented with some kind of, of line or approximating a formula. And if that's the case, then, then it's going to be a lot more complex for us to, to use past data to project future data into the future. But if we're saying, hey, look, this looks like it approximates some kind of actual curve, in this case, a straight line, then we can use the formula to help give us some predictive power of what's going to happen uh, in the future. So notice that this histogram up top, uh, I made with a bar chart, and we could make the, make the histogram as well with a histogram in Excel. If we do it with a histogram, the histogram in Excel is going to try to give us a top and bottom number, but you can see there's a there's one, uh, it's one number distance apart. So we so you can use either of those formula those uh, charts to in essence get get the same uh, result. So if you want to check that out in Excel, we'll have that in Excel. Now in Excel, if also you wanted to run this experiment this experiment multiple times and say, okay, that's pretty close right here to the straight line. What if I did it four times? Uh, then and I could run multiple experiments and say, okay, are, are all of them going to come out similar? Similar. So we rolled, once again, we did the, the random number generator between one through six as if we rolled the dice a thousand times, four times, right? So again, this is what, what I, apparently they used to do for for uh, the in the universities. You know, if you worked in there, they had, you know, people just rolling dice all day uh, and they're part of the union job and stuff. But now we have the computer doing that. You know, it took a long time, but the, but now the dice rollers are out of there and we just, we generate it with a computer now. So then if we if we made our, our histograms this way, you could see again, it, it's approximating a straight line. This is the first uh, results. This is then the second results. It's not exactly the same, of course, because there's randomness in it, but you can see it still kind of approximates the straight line. Here's the third one of a thousand rules. So they're all different, but they, they all, you know, approximate basically that straight line. And the idea, if you think about the sampling concept, would be that if I was to roll this an infinite amount of times, which would be the entire population, then it would in essence be, you know, a straight line representation uh, meaning you would expect the outcome to be one over six, right? For each uh, roll times inf an infinite number of times, right? Uh, but because we have a sample of of the data, it's not gonna it's not gonna come out perfect, but we can approximate it uh, with our f formula, and so that's the easiest kind of formula to approximate, right? It's a straight line. We can see we can see that now. Obviously, if we can do a similar thing with curves, which we'll talk about in future presentations, representing the data with a more complex formula, but still a formula so that we can make predictions uh, with, with, a, with a formula, then that would be great as well. And we'll get into some of those in future presentations.